we often don't take time to really understand that all of these actions, whether it's going abroad or having a significant job experience like AmeriCorps or working on campus, is actually building a bridge. It's building a bridge of skills and experiences that we bring to the table every time we walk into a room. Every time we attack a new task, whether it's service work, in the world of work, or in our families, we bring these things to task. Um, it's a history. And often, you know, we're too busy looking forward that we don't look backwards to see what we've built. Those of you in career services know that often we deal with patching this up on a day-to-day -day basis. We sit down with that student and we talk through their experiences and we help them uncover some of their learning so that they can present it well to employers. But some of the things that we do, we don't have enough time for, just us. And it shouldn't be the last, we shouldn't be the last persons they meet with. Reflective learning is everyone's job at the university. Fostering it is everyone's job. Faculty members, administrators, department secretaries, advisors, peer mentors, peer counselors, tutors. It's everyone's job. Because if we do that, we really are a learning organization. So with that, what I'd like to do is interview a very courageous student who's come, who's come today, and we're just going to have a conversation, and you're going to listen to us, and then we're going to go from there. So who's decided to go first? I'm going first. OK, Luisa's going to go first. <laughs> We talked a little bit beforehand, and as we've done this at other schools, um, I may ask some questions <laughs> that, um, that she's not comfortable answering or that she just doesn't, just like, I can't think of that. So um, I told her that's totally okay. And to kind of forget about all of you out there, so we're just gonna have this conversation, and you guys are gonna listen to it, okay? So um, I'm gonna have you use the mic primarily so that they can hear you. And um, go from there. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, who, who are you? Where are you in school? I am a junior. Mm -hmm. I study marketing. I'm um, a double major with advertising. Um, yes. I've been going to UT for, this is my second year at UT. I took my first year at University of Texas San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's good. And then where did you do your study abroad? I did my study abroad in Barcelona. This past semester. And what did you go there to learn? I went there to learn Spanish. Um, I've always been, I've learned Spanish at school, but I felt like I needed more practice with it. And just to get out a little bit, see what else is out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, where did you stay in Barcelona? I stayed in an apartment um, with two other girls that were also from UT. And um, we had a really good time. Define <laughs> really good time. <laughs> um, we met a lot of people from all over the world. Um, we met a few locals, but a lot of people really from everywhere. And uh, made really good friends that will probably last for a long time. Can you give me an example of one of those folks? Um, of a person that I met? Yeah. Just everybody that was studying with us. We were, our, our study abroad, abroad group um, included everybody from undergrads to graduates to everything. And it was, it was good for networking. I have friends that are, really have jobs in certain companies. And so were they from, they were they all from UT or they no, no, international no. students? International, from, a lot of them from Europe, um, South America, the, I don't know, they're from New Zealand, Canada, they're from Canada. Okay. Um, let's talk about the one from New Zealand. Okay. What did you learn from her? With her? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, he, what, what was she studying? She was studying business, I think. I think she was on Claire. Mm -hmm. She's an undergraduate. She's about to finish her degree um, in a year and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. She's planning actually coming to Texas to visit over here a little bit. Maybe doing a master's degree over here. Mm -hmm. And what, 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 what made you guys bond so well? Um, just our personalities are very compatible. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand as well, um, and it gave me a place to 
accomplish, I really want to go spend some time with her and see So you're building on some mutual interests. Right. right? And, and so do you, she's got an interest in Texas, you've got an interest in New Zealand. Um, you know, what, do, what do you want to do when you go to New Zealand? Are you just going to be a tourist? Do you want to work in New Zealand? I don't think I want to work in New Zealand. I think it's a little too far for me. <laughs> okay. Um, when you were studying Spanish, um, how would you say, how, how much did your Spanish improve over the time you were there? It improved a lot, a lot. Um, I had Spanish just from school. I, I'm fluent in Portuguese, which is kind of similar, so that helped me a little bit with understanding the accent. But um, I used to speak a mix between Portuguese and Spanish, and now I can define separately the two languages, which helps me a lot. And it helps me a lot in spelling. I had to write essays in Spanish and read, and especially listening, I can understand what was your what was your classroom experience like? The classrooms were pretty small and they were very case based education. So we had a lot of guest lectures from um, directors of companies that uh, basically just gave examples the entire class period. So we barely had any classes with professors teaching theoretical things. Okay. So they balanced with the professor of teaching the theory, right? I'm sorry. They, they balanced with. No, no. There was a, uh, I had a few classes that the professor only taught one class of, okay. of the entire semester. It was mainly case studies. Mm -hmm. Case based. And so you met directors from different companies mm -hmm. in Spain. Yes. Can you give me an example of that? Yes, I met the um, director of IKEA in Spain, and that was really interesting. He told us about how IKEA started, how it spread, the history of the company, what they did, to their philosophy of, um, of marketing how they can keep their low cost, their cost so low, and sell just by quantity making their profit. Mm -hmm. And did that help to inform any of your thoughts about marketing? Yeah, definitely. Um, just the practical side of how things actually work in the world, because I've heard so many cases that it's really different than the theories I've learned before I learned. their philanthropic side in terms of being able to extend their brand and their market right. and what their company's value. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of that here in the U.S.? Uh, give me a principle that would that would help help me understand that. Uh, we studied a case that was, um, who does the West Coast thing? Is it Raven that does the, the, the study that one, the, well, the easier one, the piece of hard red, mm -hmm. I guess, going to, So you had to do a lot of case studies. You had to work with students from different universities on those. Tell me a little bit about what that was like. It was difficult. We, there, was a, um, there was a few misunderstandings. Just uh, we, had a, we had a huge project on Starbucks, which is a uh, company that's global, globalized, but uh, very different in the places that it, it hits. So I mean, I had a completely different perspective of Starbucks than all the Spanish people that were in my group, the Italian people that were in my group, and um, so. We had, a difficult, me, we had some difficulties just getting the project done because they say something, I don't agree, I don't think Starbucks is about that. And Can you give me an example? Uh, like, how would an Italian see Starbucks as opposed to somebody in the US? I, I thought the US kind of seen it as a place to go pick up coffee and take it on the go and go to work. Starbucks in, in Italy and in Spain is all about the experience, it's all about sitting down and having coffee, and you can sit down there and not order anything. Here, I feel like, um, especially in New York, I mean, people just grab Starbucks everywhere you go. You have a plastic cup that they're just carrying around. So you had to really understand the cultural context for the advertising, right? right. Um, did you ever have any language barriers as you guys were working as a group? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> How did you how did you manage to come up with a solution for that? Did you always get your projects done on time? Did how, how did 
I'm just getting everything on time. Um, we, we just try to adapt. I mean, the Spanish people mostly spoke English as well. And um, we're just trying to find a common understanding of words. There was a, an interesting experience with Morgan Bank that they were, they, someone had to find a, uh, is it a uh, public company? And um, all the Spanish thought that public companies were companies owned by the government. And whereas here, we learn it as companies that have stock. So that was a big deal for her, and uh, differentiating that. That was a huge barrier. She was very stressed out. So when you think about that's a that's a huge misunderstanding. Yeah, that's a huge and that could really impact the accuracy of the final exactly. report. They had to pick a company that was um, that was public, and she wanted to pick a, a Starbucks, and they wanted to pick. Mm -hmm. So. How did you make sure that your understanding then between members of the group were actually on par? What kinds of things did you do to make sure that you, okay, this is this? How did you clarify to make sure that they were really understanding what you meant and what and that they were understanding or that they're, what they were trying to communicate, communicate to you was being understood? Uh, we depended a lot on the Spanish because they knew better what to expect from the teachers. So we had them as just to lay out what we have to do for each project because in Spain they don't get a lot of guidelines when they set up projects and that was that was very difficult to deal with um, just doing it all on your own and so we relied a little bit on the on the local people there to help us with that and they uh, they were it's a small school and they're used to having a lot of in the exchange students so they were really receptive and helped us so we relied on on people who have passed right. So you had to do a lot of things on your own, and that be, that's really different than here. Okay, yeah. okay. Tell me a little bit about how you felt in that process. I, I panicked for a little bit because I did these talks that was like, um, write what you think about the internet and for a marketing class. And I mean, I don't know how many pages to write. I don't know what aspects to write about it. I have no idea. And I just emailed the professors and asked for more explanations. We used to hear having a syllabus with what we're going to do every day and all this stuff, and it was completely different. Um, and you just had to work through it and hope for a good grade. And when you got it back, uh, maybe just try to change and build on top of what you what you began to learn. How has that changed your learning now that you're back here in Texas? Uh, I feel like it's a lot more structured here. It's easier to be to know exactly what you have to do. But um, do you ever go beyond what you have to do? I do sometimes now. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, but it, it's pretty different. Um, I know I feel like the classes. Um, I take a lot more from the classes here, but um, it's stuff that I feel like could, because it's more theoretical, it could um, be of a lot more use than just case studies. But I know that case studies are very important as well. Uh, it's just a, it's completely different kind of learning. Mm -hmm. So imagine yourself going into your first job. What's the most significant thing you learned about your, yourself during your study abroad experience that you think would add value to an employer? I met them during their, I would 
talked to a few people after the classes, after we were done with the case study. But it, um, you know, how they're doing those, but I haven't really caught up. Like, I caught up. Okay. Anything else you want to add? No? Okay, tell me a little, everyone give her a little bit of Tell me a little bit, how, how are you feeling? Did you know where I was going with these questions? I have no idea. <laughs> what did you guys see? Did you see a very prepared student? I saw, <clears throat> what I saw you was very gradually teasing from her transferable skills from her study abroad experience, that she can handle ambiguity, that she can work independently, that she can um, get lost but find her way back, mm -hmm. that she's comfortable with people from different environments. Other things that's here. One I noticed was she began a little bit like this picture on the front of this pamphlet of talking about the fun times that were there. <laughs> and the people and, and I presume pub crawling or whatever else. And then it was only upon uh, pressing her did she start talking about the, the, the sort of things that she learned that one can apply to the workplace. So you, you kind of, you guys all kind of noticed. I had, she'd say, "Oh, this is really great," and I have to say, "What was really great about it?" I met all these great people, and then I just happened to pick a person from New Zealand, just just because. And I'm still trying to pull from what, what's there, what's there. It's a great experience, but we're trying to find out more. So you were like, her eyes. I don't know if you guys could catch her eyes, but her eyes were like, <laughs> going with this. When we get this all the time, it's like. What do I need to know this for? Um, when I start thinking about some of the things that you were telling me, and I think about the skill sets that Dr. Gardner had talked about earlier, do you think that you did a pretty good job illustrating those? Oh, I think I should have, I think. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> I had to drag that one out. Did you, do you find yourself doing more now that you're back? Well, yeah, sometimes I do a little bit more. But the way I might interpret that as an employer is like, well, you know, sometimes, <laughs> maybe. Um, the things that, that really walk away from here that I think would really sing with any employer, I know you're in marketing, but you met with, uh, you, were t you were learning, uh, you enhanced your language skills clearly. You, you were very articulate about that, the changes in the accent, being able to uh, distinguish between Portuguese and Spanish accents, and, and really being able to extend your knowledge of language. That's, that was a perfect answer. But then you had a lot of case-based studies, and you, were, you met with directors of different companies in Spain. Now, I have to think that for an advertising marketing major, that you're going to be involved in some type of global business. So let's say you were working for Starbucks. How would you know how to market Starbucks in, in Italy? We've got a little bit of history here with John. You made a, you had the opportunity to make a lot of contacts, and you told me you collected some business cards, but you really haven't done anything with them. Why? I don't know. I really should have. <laughs> you really should have. Do you realize that when that that level of learning, the fact that you were able to meet with brand managers and managers in various foreign companies, even if there is no direct link? maybe can become part of your extended network so that, let's say, in two years when you're graduated and you're off to your first job um, and you have, you're, you have the opportunity to work on a marketing campaign, you can tap into them as part of your professional network. And it's not necessarily about doing anything right now, but just get, be keeping that contact open. So you extended, you had potential to extend your business contacts in a global arena. Right? Which we really didn't follow up on, but I know what you're going to do this weekend, right? <laughs> right? Okay. The whole area when we were talking about these cross cultural teams and being able to work with people from different countries, being able to clarify language, and finding the resources that you could to make sure that you didn't make crit critical gaps, right? Probably in the business college, the biggest. Um, it's, it's very old. They were talking about marketing and trying to market the Nova in Mexico, which means no go, which really wasn't good. You had uh, the opportunity in, 
working on these cases to really understand what a global marketing strategy was. So on your resume, you could really talk about, really enhanced my knowledge of global marketing strategies. You could learn how to work within a um, multinational team on a project. You can give examples of how you dealt with conflict, the importance of cultural research and, and, and uh, market research and knowing your target base, right? All of those things can fit together. Did, did we hear that? Did we hear that from her? No. And, and you don't feel bad. Don't feel bad because there's no one else that's ever been able to do that. But it's, it's a bad There has it. Nobody that I've unpacked at any of the schools has been able to come right out and just and, and really hit this uh, on the nail. And you're an awesome student. You're gonna, I'm sure that you do very, very well in your interviews, and I think it, it, you're gonna be fine. But it's taking it back to that next level. You see what Dr. Gardner was saying about like the, job, the internships today or the, the first entry level jobs. It's about you being able to talk like an insider. How many other students nationally have the opportunity to have a whole um, course, case-based course, taught in Spanish in marketing, and meet with various companies. That's huge. That's huge. That's something that you bring to the table. You might have a better understanding of Latin uh, markets than anybody else, or anybody else in a particular candidate pool. And the question is, how are you going to leverage that for you? Because if I were a recruiter, I'd be perking up. Because I know where my emerging markets are. And I know how important Spanish is. So that's what I'm going to look for. Um, being able to uh, use, understand social marketing and the importance of uh, things like breast cancer research. And I said, oh, you know, can you give me an example? Let's see. Um, I really can't remember the name of it. Maybe maybe? Or Visa, right? And this is often what students do in an interview. They think, you know, nobody knows more that, about me than me, right? So they go in and a recruiter asks them this question or question and they're like, oh, uh, not quite sure. Um, and that doesn't show preparedness. That doesn't show the ability to hit, get, get hit the ground running. But you have such a myriad of skills here. The mutual interest, the personal contacts alone that you've made. In two and a half years when you guys are both graduated and now on your way, you are now, they, now you've got a professional network with people from New Zealand, people from all over Europe, people from China perhaps, that were with, who knows. Whoever that cohort was, they are gonna go on, they're gonna succeed in your field, and they become a potential part of your networking pool. So, you see some things that you can add into um, your resume after talking to that? Yeah. <laughs> Other reactions from the crowd? Yes. Um, so, I can, yeah, that example was fantastic because it's such a good illustration of I think what happens every day. I'm an academic advisor here at home, and it's it's a learning process for students, no matter you know, if they're an undergrad or a graduate or doctoral. And at every stage that a person is involved with their education, you know, they're becoming more self-aware. And so I think, I don't, did you say it's your second year in school? Uh, I can see, yeah, it's my, I'm a junior, it's my third year. Okay, so what I've learned is that when students are younger, or even juniors, going into their senior <coughs> year, and they're unsure about things, it's just, they may, I mean, I may have noticed, like all the things you're noticing her, and all the things we were noticing her, that she wasn't exactly articulating, but we know exist within her. I don't think she's at the point in her life where she's recognizing that. And you know, it may be in six months or in two months or you know, in a year she'll be preparing for an interview or, or hearing herself talking to an interview and realize, oh my goodness, I know how to perform in this scenario. I know how to, to show that I am capable of doing X, Y, and Z because I had this experience two years ago. And, you know, so what I think, what I try to help students do is what we all that are working with students need to try to do is just meet them at their level, I think. And so maybe if I were talking with her, or she were my students, I would, what I heard from her that I thought was great for now, like using now, because I'm not in an interview if I'm advising her in my office, um, is talking to her about how her grades are and her performance in classes. So she's not going to freak out if there's a professor teaching one of her classes and they don't have a very thorough syllabus. A lot of the students around her will because they didn't have that different, you know, experience than she did. And, um, 
if a student was talking with her that hadn't been abroad, dealing with people from other cultures, they would freak out if there's an international student in their group here in the States trying to work with them. And then they'd come out and complain about it. It's just hard because they're not on the same page with us. And But she's not going to you know, have that problem. And mm -hmm. so what I'm always like, Realize that this is important to do, but it's just to put it down on their level. And so, at this point, maybe it's just showing her in her education and her academic efforts how her experiences is reflected. We could probably spend another hour just mining the project management per portion. Yes, <laughs> that alone, um, from conflicts with people to um, breaking down the project to making sure things were accurate um, to taking initiative on it. Um, utilizing you know the networks that they had to make sense of it and that's one of the things is that often like you're saying that that all of a sudden so certain things are being prompted in your head granted we only had a few minutes here but had Louisa not come today you probably would have said wow I still had a good study abroad experience and eventually she would have recognized this and tapped into those experiences but the question is Given what we know about the job market today, given the, the national crisis that, that Dr. Gardner's pointed out, how can we accelerate Louisa's learning so that she's able to not just um, tap into those experiences at some point, that she really is taking a leadership role and taking that out there? That reflects well on your ability to grow as a professional, and obviously on the University of Texas as an institution that you train leaders, right? So, I have to say this. I was walking over and it says, it says bleed orange, think green. I really like that slogan. So I'm hoping you guys are going to think green and think of Michigan State and <laughs> But it is about that. You've got, I mean, you have, when I, when I even think about students that I've met, we, we've done this with people at Boston University and Minnesota and Michigan State and all over. But when I think about the opportunity you have, it's very rare. And when I talk to employers, they're like, well, if you don't do take initiative for yourself while you're in school, how do I know that you're going to do that for my company or my organization when I hire you after graduation? You took an essential risk by going to Spain. You wanted to enhance your language. But you learned a lot of other things along the way. And that can be one of the more powerful things you bring to an interview. Now, have you had an internship yet? But you're going to go right out and make sure that you get one. Right? I'm recruiting right now. <laughs> good, good. Um, and even if even if you do something for no pay, it's about getting. I know that it's a bad thing in the business world, <laughs> but it's about getting that experience and being able to apply it. So, um, what other questions? Do you have any questions of me or, or questions of the group? Do, do you think that others in your cohort that went with you, like your roommates, etc., learned the same kinds of things? Do you guys ever talk about it? We do. We do. We talk about it. Um, about what you've learned or the good times you've had? <laughs> Mostly about the good times. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, maybe we'll sit down and talk about what we learned. <laughs> 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 That's my challenge to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's my challenge to you. Um, any student that, oh, yes, yes. I actually want to ask you a question, and I'm thinking about this idea of both scaling this idea and being able to and answer honestly, if before you had gone on the trip, you had seen that list of these are the skills that employers are going to want, would that have influenced you any in the way you thought about your experience while you were there? I mean, we can give you the list coming back and say, all right, think about how to apply things you had. But do you think you would have drawn more from your experience if you had been thinking about it on the way out or would it just have been... Barcelona, you know. <laughs> it might have, I can't say for sure. I mean, I did have a few things that I knew I should have done, like networking and these things, but I ended up not. It, time just went by really fast. Um, it's hard to say. It might have influenced me a little bit, but I always had it in the back of my mind, like how this is going to add to my uh, professional experience as well. Yeah. I don't know that answers your question, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There wasn't a, there wasn't a right or wrong answer to that. I wanted to see. Yeah, thought. there's two questions here and in the back. Do you find a difference in interviewing females versus males? Versus women? Um, 
A little bit, yes and no. It depends. It depends. I um, uh, females tend to be a little bit more um, forthcoming about how they're feeling. Um, guys, it, it, it really depends. I don't know. Feel like, well, we've had some young women that have been very, very difficult to unpack. Yeah. The problem with the young men is that they're not. They they just. It takes us a long time to get what they what they did because they they don't really they just dismissed it so fast um, and, and they really do focus on the fun time and I will say that young women can put themselves in, in the context and shift the context around faster than young men can uh, we had that comes to mind the young guy we had that went to Italy with the, the advertising class that was he was the only male of 15 students but he was not he was a he was a marketing major. And he went on it for, for fun and a lark, and then it, it took us forever to unpack him because he just he dismissed the whole experience as negative because all these women, young women, I shouldn't say this, they'll strike out at me here, but they just bickered among themselves all the time. They couldn't get their projects done, and yet he he so he had written it off, and they, and a lot of them do that rather quickly. I I think that's what we struggle with, um, and. <laughs> young guys, won't, young men won't let us probe as deep. They get what they, they won't let us go. I mean, she was wonderful, but we get we, we, they, some of them will go pretty far, uh, particularly if they're in a homestay and they, they talk about family and stuff like that. Guys don't do that. Yeah, often uh, the culture, like uh, learning to adapt to another culture. I mean, yours was so rich because you had a variety of international students in your in your group. I didn't really have to probe. Um, well, she was staying with UT students, so she had a, a foundation. But people that are living in home stage, you can prod, and, and it's often very difficult for them to um, manage that environment. And how did they adapt? And how did they fit into the family? There's so much there um, to deal with. We did a, ma a mail at the Boston conference, um, and he was a business person who had pretty much decided he wanted to work in Spain. And he had gone to every link to, to figure out how he could get EU citizenship. And because of his Italian heritage, he found relatives in Italy and was in the process of working through the Italian consulate so he could get his Italian dual citizenship so that he could work in Spain. And he, we were talking about this. The links that he had gone to were excellent examples of initiative that not everybody would do, but he was totally dismissing it. He's like, I'm a general business major, and all I know is I want to work in Spain. I said, good, what are you doing for that? And we began to work through it. And he had set a goal. He was going above and beyond to make sure that it happened. But in his mind, it was totally dismissed because, you know, I I'm really thinking about changing my field. It's funny you say that because um, I also want to work in Spain, and I um, am getting my U um, citizenship through Portugal right now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, what a coincidence. <laughs> she should be taking the NIST. See, and, 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 and you know, obviously, if you go over there, you're going to have to have a set of, of employer contacts, which, you know, of course, you have those business cards for. <laughs> <laughs> there was a blank question way in the back. Yeah, well, I, I, it's maybe more of an observation than anything else, but in, in working with students for for over 40 years and watching the whole process take place, what happens is that the remarkable, they recognize it as the remarkable when they hit the ground and they think, oh my God, look what I have to do. But because the remarkable so rapidly becomes ordinary, by the time they come back, they don't see the metamorphosis they've been through. And sometimes some things just as simple as setting the stage by saying, compare yourself now with where you were in advance, or where you were a year ago, and how nervous you were, and what you didn't know, and all the things that you went through to get you to the person you are now, can also kind of help to open them up a little bit. And it's not just with this, because we do the same thing as advisors all the time when we're helping students, whether it's with essays or whatever else, it's to take them from the point of where they've drawn their conclusions, where they've ended, with these are the conclusions I've drawn and have them go back to the things that led them to draw their conclusions to be able to provide the illustrations for how they got there. That's the piece that seems to be missing across the board. It is. 
it is. It's not just study abroad. It's everything. I mean, your career services colleagues can tell you this. A uh, student will have a, I, I, I talk to students who often have data entry jobs. Okay? So, you said you did data entry. Yeah. What kind of, what kind of data were you entering? Numbers. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of system were you using? I don't know. Is their system? Was it a spreadsheet? <laughs> was it a database? It was their system. I said, well, what kind of numbers were they? I think it was money. <laughs> Good. That's a business major. <laughs> All right. The idea is that understanding, no matter where you are, you want to understand your role in the context of something larger. So most of our students are going to start out in entry level things like working on campus, et cetera. But even if you're mopping floors somewhere, what skills are you learning? What are you, how does that shape in your experience? What, how are you looking at the organization that you're a part of? And that is key. Why this works really well with study abroad is that um, study abroad students have a great need to talk about this experience. And it ends about a week after they've been here. And everybody's like, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm glad you went to Spain. <laughs> but it sounds like that, you know that movie, One Time in Band Camp? Red in Spain. Red in Spain. Or when I was in Ireland, I did the same thing. Right? So it's about harnessing their, they know this is a very transformative experience. Here's another example of a, of a study abroad peer mentor who was going to talk to fa a family of new students and new students at Michigan State University. We were so excited by this. First time we ever did it. And this young lady gets up and she did. And it, I am just so happy to be here. Oh my god, study abroad was like the best experience of my whole life. It was like so good, I don't even have words to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys are all going to want to do it. And they were like, yay you, but well, what's in it for me? <laughs> and she really, she's so genuine and so uh, passionate. And she had gone, uh, she had been in uh, Strasbourg and had gone to um, the, yeah, the EU capital and, and done some things there. She really had a rich experience, but she really hadn't done hadn't broken that down to be able to communicate it to someone else so that they could see a value or they could say, oh, I could use something there. So an employer, the things they can use from Louisa are her contacts, her experiences, those things that she's going to bring to the table. When we're talking with our students about the job search process, we have to get them out of thinking about themselves. We tell them it's a lot like gaming. And you ask them, okay, well, what do you do if you find somebody you want to date? You check them out on Facebook, right? <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You check them out on Facebook or MySpace. You might ask a friend about, you do a whole bunch of research before you get up the nerve to talk to that person, right? If they applied that same thing to any organization they're going to work for, whether it's a finance organization, a social service organization, a business, um, they would be that much further up. They put more energy into who they're going to date than who they're going to work for. And all of a sudden, they start thinking, man, that makes sense. If you even think about, you know, let's say you have that first date, you probably have some topics you know the other person's interested in that you're just going to be sure to bring up, bring up so that they, that they, you know, can feel comfortable and they, you know, right? You do all that just instinctively. It's the same thing in the job search process. And so it's helping them draw analogies to their own 